wait. Hopefully, it'll be all right. Okay. Now, I am going to read from a book called The, the Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense by Suzette Hayden Elgin. He just came in. The Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense by Suzette Hayden Elgin. I bought this book a long time ago. Okay. Barnes & Noble, whatever, discount list. I used to go there looking for books. So, I'm going to read chapter 1, page 21, the four basic principles. For every person in the society who is suffering physical abuse, which I have in my life at times, there are hundreds suffering the effects of verbal abuse. Gone through that too. For every person who just got a fist in the face, there are hundreds who just took a verbal blow to the gut, which is why I don't have a comment section open or leaving my likes or dislikes because of trolls. And there are major differences between these two kinds of injury. The physical attack is at least obvious and unmistakable. The physical attack hurts horribly and leaves a mark, but it's usually over fast. And the mark is evidence in your favor against your attacker. Verbal violence is a very different matter, except in rare cases, for example, when someone lies about you publicly. Boom, that's a big one. Before witnesses can be charged with slander, there's no agency that you can call for help. Pain of verbal abuse goes deep into the self and festers there. But because nothing shows on the surface, it will not win you even sympathy, much less actual assistance. Worst of all, verbal violence all too often goes unrecognized. I'll give you an example of that. Okay. I went to a job. And I kicked ass. God damn it, I did a good job. Whooped it. So the manager decides he thought it was funny to insult me in front of a co-worker. He found out otherwise when I ripped his fucking head off. Fuck you. I have honor. I have worked hard. And I do not deserve to be treated like that. And this is someone I'd known a long time. So anyway... But because the aggression is so well hidden, you are likely to blame yourself. Oh, yeah, I didn't do a good enough job. Oh, oh. Uh huh. Instead of the aggressor. And to add to your own misery like this. I can't understand why I feel so stupid when I'm with her. She's always so considerate and she's much such a nice person. There must be something wrong with me. He or she, no. The person is abusive and manipulative, therefore block them. And that's how I am. That's why I do not have a comment section open. In a situation like that, there are probably, there probably is something wrong with you. Yes, it's called insecurity and codependence, right? Versus independence and interdependence being the highest level of relationship. That's me adding that. Your problem is that you are the target of verbal violence and you don't have the least idea how to defend yourself against it. When someone looks you right in the eye and says, you're an idiot, you know that's verbal abuse and you probably have ways of dealing with it. But when someone smiles at you and says, even you should be able to understand why that won't work, it's not so easy, especially if a few sweethearts or good buddies or darlings are scattered round to confuse. I just think about it like in the old school days, man. Like my granddad, he didn't have a filter. He'd just be like, fucking do it. You know, and I just, there, 
<laughs> I don't know how to explain. It was hardcore. <laughs> anyway, whatever. This ain't 1950, but, you know. We get little or no training in verbal self-defense. Once upon a time, anyone who pretended to an education learned it. It was called rhetoric. Interesting. They use that. She's using grammar. What is it? Logic and rhetoric, right? You got to learn. You got to learn grammar. The what letters are. Then you got to learn how to combine them, right? And then you got to learn how to speak. Uh huh. And if we really went back to the basics, we would have to put it back in the back in our curriculum. Today, a rhetoric class usually means a course in writing. Huh, that's going down. I learned cursive. People don't learn that shit anymore. They don't care. Shit handwriting. Not in my day. I was important. That's why I have good handwriting. Thank you, Mom. This book is a manual to teach you a verbal martial art. Also, I might add, my parents did not talk to me in baby talk. That's why I don't talk like this. I'm not making fun of those people. I'm just saying. If you're like, okay, you poo poo then that's how they're going to talk when they get older. My dad was not like that. I was almost treated like an adult at three years old. I'm not kidding. That's how my dad was. This book is a manual to teach you a verbal martial art. Unlike a number of books now avail available, it's not intended to train you to attack others or to be violent against yourself. That's a big one. Like self-negative talk, right? And I know that one well. Instead, it will teach you how to use your opponent's strength and momentum as tools. That's an Aikido principle for your own defense. Redirecting it, you see, instead of reacting and being controlled by it. Because they know you'll react if you're emotional. They target it. Doesn't mean you want to be a cold Borg, you know what I mean? You learn to head off verbal confrontation so skillfully that they rarely happen, and you will learn to do so with honor. What have I done? Hmm? Just that. The person with a black belt in a physical martial art is unlikely to be a violent person. No shit. Because they learn training, respect, how to act in the dojo, etc. Because if you don't act right, the teacher says, out. You want to come back, act correctly, you can come back. That's how it is. And I have in the same way on my channel. Knowing that you are fully capable, not only of defending yourself, but also of inflicting harm on others, that makes you a very careful person. Far more careful than you would be if you reacted to every threatening situation with an untrained, listen clear, panic response. That is what they want. Spinning in circles. There are four basic principles of verbal self-defense that you need to learn. First principle, know that you are under attack. You must be able to recognize a situation where you are in danger or actually under attack. And I'm usually the person that sees it coming, warns others, and is ignored. Eventually, I just stop talking. What's the point? They don't listen. If you continually assume that the reason you come out of conversations feeling somehow hurt and depressed is that you are too sensitive or paranoid or childish, Sometimes that is true, but it's an easy way to pigeonhole someone if you don't want them to get to the truth, because that means you will help be held accountable. Imagine that. Holy shit. You won't recognize danger when it's there. Also, I might add, people with severe abuse, which I know, are sensitive to that. So the trauma is so strong that you literally don't pay attention to danger. Whoa. I have watched people walk directly into traffic. Autistics. High functioning. I'm not autistic, but I have friends who are. Need to know. They don't have the same barriers other people do. 
if you can always be taken by surprise because you have no idea what a verbal aggression is or how to spot it. So they might target an autistic to trigger them. Then they have a freak out. Oh, isn't it funny? No, it's not funny. That person could die. It's not funny. It's like you're big and strong, so you just beat the shit out of everyone. Same thing intellectually. You're a bully. You go, oh, I thought it was a nerd. No, nerds can be bullies too. The vast majority of verbal attacks won't even happen if you are trained in verbal self-defense. Just as the thug who's planning a mugging is likely to back off and change plans after discovering that the victim isn't helpless. So if people are bullying you on the internet and you are being reactive, they are getting what they want. You're focusing on them. You're not focusing on what you need to be doing, what your priorities are. And that's the point. They want to distract you from priorities, period. My opinion, of course, especially if they're a competitor. And I'm not. I'm out here creating art. This is about spirituality and soul, not selling shit. Nope. There are very few channels I go to. And if I do, that means that I think highly of you. Okay? It means I think you're, you are in the groove. If I think you're a fucking sellout, I'm gone. Quick. Often before any words are spoken aloud, so you've noticed it, body language basic character you could talk to somebody if your intuition is turned on you will know whether they are good or not of intention second principle know what kind of attack you are facing you must learn to judge and recognize your opponent's weapons strength and skill obvious characteristics such as the loudness of someone's voice an unpleasant facial expression or the use of openly insulting or sometimes openly flattering. Kissing your ass. Business deal. Hi. Fake ass bullshit. Okay. Words are not reliable indicators of these things. <laughs> Often a reliance on the obvious signs will mislead you completely and leave you defenseless like spotting a liar. Third principle, know how to make your defense fit the attack. That means adapting, just like Bruce Lee. Wave the intercepting fist, except wave the intercepting mind. The response you make has to match your opponent's mood. You must choose an appropriate response and appropriate level of intensity. That's straight up Bruce Lee. Not only is there no need for you to waste your energy on a weak opponent with little skill, it's unethical, did you hear this, and cowardly for you to do that. You don't go after bunny rabbits with an elephant gun. No shit. And just as it would be foolish to choose a sword as a weapon against a, someone armed with a machine gun, the verbal weapon should be chosen to fit the situation. The phrase, enough is enough. It's not a worn out platitude in the art of verbal self-defense. That's drawing the line. That's having boundaries. On the contrary, there's no excuse for anything more than just exactly enough. Okay. Fourth principle, know how to follow through. So this is what they learn. Okay. Okay. If you don't follow through and you let shit slide, they're watching you. And they go, oh, poor tactician. Oh, I see she's making chess move mistakes. I, I see he's making mistakes. If they don't have good intentions, they're looking sideways at you, baby. You must be able to carry out your response once you've chosen for many people, this may be the most difficult part of the verbal self-defense. That's right. Standing up for yourself. Not using a machine gun. Whether you get a feather or a sledgehammer, choose which one. 
as she said. So, okay, especially when your opponent is, in physical terms, smaller or weaker than you are, right? You still have to have self-control, even though you're more powerful than the other person, whether it is mentally or physically. So if you know that, are you really acting strong? Nope. You are weak. You aren't even willing to go up against somebody at your own level. That's how I feel. It's like a 16-year-old picking on a 5-year-old. We have all been taught to pick on somebody our own size. That's old school, too. That's fair. In verbal confrontations, it's important to, rem to remember that size has little to do with strength and that some of the most skilled of verbal bullies are only six years old. That's funny. She's a mom. <clears throat> It will help if you keep firmly in mind that verbal self-defense is a gentle art. That means don't beat the shit out of your kid with your words, not just your hands. It's a way of preventing violence. That's right. It's called self-control, something, you know, my dad struggled with. He would just react and then fucking storm on and he'd beat the hell out of me because <laughs> I was fucking playing. Whatever. Okay. When a parent picks up a small child who is just about to whack a playmate over the head with a toy truck, that act is interfering with the child's freedom and is, in a formal and technical sense, the use of force. Especially if, as is often true, the child has to be physically restrained from carrying out his or her plans. <coughs> Verbal self-defense... It's like that, except in the most extreme cases when it's used skillfully in a non-violent activity and a way of keeping the peace. It will also help to remember that we know that we now know hostile language is dangerous, not only to its target. I'm going to stop right there. I would also say will, intent, um, abusing spiritual powers. Is the same thing as that to me, but in the astral realm, and people do it all the time. Think they're cool. Ooh, I found a new trick. I have psychic powers. No, you ain't cool. You're ignorant and very unwise to be wasting yourself in such a way. That's why I don't leave my body to leave it open for someone else to have it. In my opinion, that's what I feel. Okay. Anyway, the point is to not be reactive, to be thinking your way through the situation, to be making sure that you, right off the bat, you set what the boundaries are. Let me put it this way. If I go to a woman's channel and she is allowing men to talk about her in a very derogatory, perverted way, I'm not going to respect her. I'm going to think she's a hoe and allowing it. That ain't a lady. Catch the difference. I don't mean that as an insult. I'm using it as an example. That is why at no time in any chat room have you ever heard me talk like that. Not once. It's not because I'm a prude. It's because I have honor and respect enough to not do that shit. Because it invites it from other people to do the same. See? So by the standards you set, you are allowing others to treat you in a certain way. And that's reality. So a while back, I saw that happen and I got very upset. And that is why. Because it is mm. opening it up for other men to treat mm. that woman like shit. And that is wrong. It's been more than one time in my life that I have had physical confrontations with men who were abusive to women directly in front of me, and I called them out on it. And it was not me who attacked. They attacked me for verbally confronting them. Oh, yeah. Not a light scratch, I might add. Very close to slamming my head on metal. 
Just put it that way. And I got up and I stood up for myself. And he left. Gave up his job. Not my fault. Shouldn't attack somebody at work then. Just saying. So in a way, the internet could be related to that, right? If your workplace is online, this ain't my workplace. This is my creative space. Big difference. That's the problem with becoming a commercial artist. People become entitled to you, right? You become a product. I am not a product. I'm a person. Big difference. That's why they use words like content. You have good content. That's cool. I understand the compliment. Someone said that. That's fine. But I'm not content. That's empty to me. And I take it personal. So I try to explain so it doesn't feel like I ripped somebody's head off. Don't sell me out. Do not put commercials over my shit. Pisses me off. Makes me very angry. That is what I'm avoiding. I don't want that. There's only one time that happened. I forgive that person because they're my friend. But never do that to me. And in fact, if you would, go back and remove the goddamn commercials off of it. That's how upset I was. I didn't say anything. I'm saying it now. Don't ever take my shit and put commercials on it. Never. Is it costing me a lot to not be a commercial artist when this is what I'm good at? Sure. You know, it costs me more. Selling my feelings. Being an actor. That ain't soul. It's fake. So most musicians to me are just good actors. That's it. There ain't shit. Nothing. They're empty. And I don't want to be empty. I've had this mentality since I was young. And as of recent events, watching certain artists commit suicide, no thanks. I want to live. Folk soul, folk free. Feel it deep down low. And I don't want to sell my soul to you I keep my folk soul, thank you very much You said Like a burning flame Never, never, never Never sell your dreams Because I tell you this, in the spirit world, there ain't no tip jar. Got it? And they're watching you, in my opinion. What you gonna say for yourself when you go there, whatever the other world is? I was a sellout, not me. Grandparents would be disgusted with that behavior. But that's the world, isn't it? In a world where it's sold out, the sellouts on the rise, you gave it away. You sold them down the river, say. 
Sojourn grandparents down the river, don't you know? They don't see, they don't see it that way. Cause in the other world, there ain't no money and no credit card. No, 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 no. It comes from anyway, but you don't feel the music in your soul. It's just like an elevator; it's in the background. Not if you're a folk song. I think she was sitting there so she was deep down in the folk soul city, wise woman on the wind. Grandmother pulled by the heart and soul, she's on the way down the witch's path. Sweet is your love, my dear. 
I still hear you in the cold of rain. I still see your tears slide down your cheek to the ground. Still feel, still feel. So I have I don't have a mountain of gold or a fancy car. I don't even have a wife or family. That's what abuse cost me. And so I sat in the porn night. Hoping someone would see, but no one ever came to see. Just wipe the tears off my face, rise to my feet, so long gone. Stand in the precipice, looking down to the canyon I see. Do I stand on the edge, sing my song? Do I run, do I run, do I run, do I run, do I run? Into the wind. Sometimes I feel like I'm just fading away Cause no one sees anymore No sees anymore They sold the dream away They sold the dream away Say no open practice song you see. It's really how I feel. And that is real. It's real. They didn't want it anyway, you know. So I might as well just go away. They didn't want heart and soul anymore. And so I just fade away. Never to be seen again. And this could be the last song I ever see. You ever hear? Cause they sold it down the river Long time ago But I'm gonna keep my folks so Even if I'm the only man, only man, only man so Man Left standing on the ground so Use it like a label to sell music on the side. But the goddess ain't no brand, no, no, no. You wanna sell your grandmother down the river?
If you want love, I'm your man. If you need a mountain of gold, I ain't the one for you. First of all, do you have love? Do you have love to stand? Yeah. Never sell it away, no. And still I sit here in the pouring rain It's uh, everyone selling it away It's damn to just be one man oh, One woman that doesn't sell it all the way Down the river, I don't know. They ever come back to boat so Maybe there'll be one woman, one man. They keep the boat so They keep the hot flame burning on the road. So Contract to have a me. 
I'm a free-folk soul. Free-folk. Free-folk. Free-folk soul. Never sell it away. public forum so what people that are really true are my friends and I appreciate them for their love they aren't fake they're for real that's what matters folk free I'm a folk artist and non-commercial period at no time will my music be for sale it's free that doesn't mean commercial people can take it, use it, however they would like. No, that is not allowed. If you do that, I don't honor it at all. In fact, I find it to be an insult. Big one. But they're just happy to sell themselves, so it's all good to them. It ain't good to me. I don't want it. That is not why I started my channel, to sell albums. Nope. I'm doing something completely different and original. I expect other people to copy and steal. That's what they do. They have no honor. Some. And some do. Because they can sell a CD. I don't give a shit. I want to feel. I want to share feelings. Not sell something. 
that a difference in your mind? Do you see it? Big one. All right. Love my people, my folk, everyone. Seek your roots. Root down, fly high. life.